Hey everybody, this is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Today we're going to do a little type of different video. Today I'm going to show you one of the things I make here right on the homestead. What is that? Well, you're going to have to stay tuned right here on Garden Jen's Journey. So welcome to my channel if you're new here. Welcome back if you've been following me for a little while. Today I'm going to show you one of the things I actually make here on my homestead because some people don't really believe me. <laughs> so if you have been following me for a while, you know that I make products from my homestead as a way for me to support my family uh, financially and gives me kind of something to do and be artistic. Um, all the things that I do are a way for me to get my artistic juices going and have a creative outlet. So today I'm going to show you one of the tie dyes that I've been working on and just kind of show you the process of finishing the tie dyes. If I can find some, I will show you some pictures of me starting to do the tie dyes. Um, but if not, you're just going to have to Bear with me as we go through the final process on washout day. So I'm going to kind of take you through the kitchen and show you what I'm doing because in the kitchen is where I do most of my creative work with my soaps, my lotions, my lip balms, and my tie-dyes. So let's head on over to there to the kitchen and I'm going to show you what's going on. All right, so this is my kitchen table, or I should say a table that is in my kitchen because we do not use it for eating. Um, there's a wood stove directly behind me, so you can't actually have a table here in the kitchen without getting baked in the winter time. Um, but anyways, this is a table that I have kind of a little higher than counter height because I use this table to do a lot of my product making. In this tub here, you'll see I've got some funny looking things. These are tie-dye shirts. Uh, they've been sitting in this tub with the top on uh, overnight. I dyed these yesterday. And in order to get the bright, vibrant, bold, crisp colors, um, they need to sit at least four hours, but generally at least overnight, up to two days, to really make sure that the dyes react to the fibers and stick well, and then you get very beautiful, bold, vibrant colors. So these are two um, of the shirts I have. The other one I have in the sink, and I'll take you over there in a minute. And these are some of the dyes that I use. Uh, for this particular design. This design that I'm doing is actually inspired by another tie-dye artist. Uh, Casual Collisions is the name of his uh, channel. And I will put a link up above to the video of this particular design because again, it's not mine. Um, I was inspired by uh, his t-shirt so this is basically a copycat of his t-shirt and so I will give him credit because credit is due and again link the video up above where you can watch him create this masterpiece. Alright so this is my sink. It's just my regular kitchen sink. You can see I'm actually washing dishes over on that side. I have some that I have to soak. So this side I am using to rinse out my shirt while my dishes are soaking. Um, don't mind the discoloration. We have very, very hard water here. And even with the uh, abrasive cleansers, and sometimes you're just left with um, discoloration. Um, this is the shirt. I just started washing it out, and I'm like, hey, I should bring you all along. So I'm going to set up the camera, show you kind of the washout, and then we're going to go from there. 
All right, so with tie-dye, um, the way to wash it out after you've let it sit for the appropriate amount of time is to rinse it in cold water first. Tie-dyes are uh, the shirts or whatever material that you're using are soaked in a soda ash solution to bring the pH of the shirt, um, I believe it's up, I cannot remember. But anyways, it manipulates the pH of the shirt that way the dyes are able to react to the fibers that are in the shirt. So to stop the reaction, because it's a chemical reaction that happens, you have to rinse all that soda ash back out of the shirt. So we do that in cold water first, and then um, after we've rinsed out uh, the shirt for a while, then we'll switch it to hot water to release the extra dye that is in the shirt. Um, there's going to be a lot of dye released because with blues, um, especially in the turquoise family, they are very concentrated and they have a long time that it's going to take to get that extra pigment out of the shirt. So it might look like I'm rinsing all the dye out of the shirt, but uh, trust me, um, it's not all the dye. It's just a lot of extra dye because the, the blues are highly, highly concentrated. So I'm going to go ahead and start rinsing this out. I'm probably going to speed this up because this takes a while. Okay, so that's the cold rinse. And I'm going to go ahead and cut um, the sinew and get this unwrapped. Um, this looks like a lot of tying, and it is. It takes a while to get this all tied up. But this is what makes the pattern just a beautiful pattern. And so I'm going to go ahead and start cutting the sinew, getting this unwrapped. And then we're going to uh, rinse this out in hot water. I use very small uh, cuticle scissors as it gets in here under the sinew without cutting the fabric. I have accidentally cut the fabric before because it's been so tight to get in there. It's a labor of love. I really, really love this design. Um, again, it's it's not my own. Um, my son, when I, I showed him the shirt, the finished product from Casual Collisions, he looked at me and goes, Mom, I don't mean to be rude or anything, but I doubt you can make that. <laughs> because the pattern, when it's done, and and you'll see it when it's done, um, it's gorgeous. It is just beautiful. It's breathtaking. And, uh, you know, it looks like something that's very, very difficult to do. And, uh, it's, it's a hard pattern to do just because there's a lot of, you got to plan. You got to plan where, where you want to put the different design elements. And then you have to tie the fabric accordingly. So those design elements happen. And uh, I don't know, I think all in all, one shirt takes me maybe a half an hour just to tie it. Because you can see how much tying there is involved here. And so, uh, yeah. But it is a light bill of love. The end result is so worth it. All right, I think I've got most of this cut where I can just start unwrapping. So we're gonna start unwrapping this shirt. <clears throat> All 
One of them, the things about sinew, one of the reasons that uh, many tie-dye ears use it, is because you can get a very, very, very tight line. I mean, you can see how tight some of these are pulled, and it's hard to get it back out sometimes because it's so, so tight. Um, but that gives you really crisp lines, whereas uh, you, you can see the crispness of that line there. See it's still white right there? Um, that's because the sinew is pulled so tight that the dye can't actually get under there. Whereas the rubber band, if you try to get it that tight, you're going to snap the rubber band. So, um, yeah, so I use sinew. And it's artificial sinew. It's not, it's not an animal product. Um, it's a replica. Um, and it's a waxed sinew. So the friction of pulling it tight warms up the wax and it adheres to itself. All right. All right, got it all untied. All right, so the reason I have it on this in my sink is when I first start rinsing it out, I don't want the sitting in muck and having the extra dye attach itself to the shirt. So I, I usually keep it up here for a while um, so the extra dye can run off. And then after a while, I'll take the rack out so now I'm going to go to a warm water. I don't want to do too hot right now because uh, hot water, I cannot handle the shirt. So right now we're going to do a, a warm water to get the excess dye to start releasing out of the fabric. All right, so I'll kind of show you what the shirt's looking like, even though we're we're not done, and it's going to change a bit as we do more washout. So this is the shirt. You got the. It's uh, kind of a beach with the different water in here, and I'm going to soak this now in a hot water bath. Um, to get more ink out of this. Um, if I was to throw this in the washer, it would take quite a few washes to, to get this out. So, um, and that's a lot of energy on the washer to, to con continue to rinse this. So I do this all by hand, and then when the water is really clear, um, like the clarity that you saw, I mean, there's still a blue tinge, but it was relatively clear. Uh, when the soak water is that clear, then I will throw it in the wash. But I'm going to show you uh, how I soak this, and then you'll see why I soak this. Because right now, with the rinsing, it looks like it's, it's fine that I can throw it in the wash. But I'm going to show you that there's a lot more dye that has to come out of this. So I just use a standard tub and some Dawn dish soap, just a little bit. <clears throat> and then I fill this up with hot water, as hot as um, I can get it, um, because the heat is what releases that extra dye out of the fabric. Then we're going to put our shirt in it. And I'll press it down with my wooden spoon because this water is hot. We're just going to let this sit here and soak probably for two or three minutes at first and then rinse it. And um, again, this is to release all the extra dye and I will show you how much dye is still in this shirt. So I'll be right back um, to show you the first rinse out. Okay, so it's been just a few minutes since I put this shirt in this very hot soapy water. And uh, if I move the shirt aside, see the color of that water? It is very, very, very dark. So, see all that blue dripping off there? 
And you can see that color of that water. Very, very dark. So there's still a lot of dye in this shirt that we have to get out before we can actually uh, put it in the washer. So I'm just adding some cold water to cool this down so I can handle it. And we're going to rinse it out because a lot of dye was released out of the fabric. So we have to kind of rinse that extra dye out and then soak it again. This is the color we're going for after it's been soaking in hot water. Is this clear clarity? But we're nowhere near that yet, so we're gonna soak this again. And for the first couple of soaks, I definitely like to use the Dawn because the, the detergent helps the extra dye that's coming out not reattach to some areas that might not have as heavy of a dye load. So that's why I used the Dawn. So here we go. We're going to add the hot water back and soak this again. And I'm going to do this as long as it takes till we get that water as clear as possible. So I'll be back when we get to that point. We're getting there, but we're still not there yet. You can see through the water now. It's not as dark, but it's still too dark. Okay, so we're at the point that I'm comfortable that most of the dye has been rinsed out and I can throw this in the wash. Um, see the clarity of the water here? On uh, camera, it probably looks like almost crystal clear. And it's not quite. There is some blue to it left. Um, but it is clear enough where I can actually put this in my washer and have it go for a, a, I usually put in for a spin cycle first because no matter how hard human hands wring this out, you can't wring enough of it out. So I put it in for a spin cycle first, which gets all the extra water out. And then I put it in for one more wash in the wash cycle. And then we throw it in the dryer. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of the shirts done because I have four of these that I have done. So I need to get the rest of them done. I'll put them in the wash, in the dryer, and then I'll show you the final product when they're all dried. Okay, so this is what one of the shirts looks like. You can see kind of the, the sandy beach there with the Caribbean blue waters getting into darker parts of the water. I'm going to show you one more shirt and what that one looks like. Okay, we got the same shirt here with the same sort of design, but you can tell how different this shirt looks from the previous shirt. So those are just two of the many shirts that I tie-dye here right on the homestead. You can visit my Etsy shop where I do uh, have lots of products there, but my tie-dye t-shirts aren't on there during uh, farmer's market season because a lot of these sell right at the farmer's market as soon as I can put them out there. You can go on to my profile page on Instagram and you can see lots of shirts there on Instagram. And if there's a certain shirt that you see on Instagram that you really like, you can uh, private message me and let me know and I can try to make a uh, replica of that design. But um, anyways, that is what I do here on the homestead. I thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this little different uh, take on the homestead, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you can stay part of the journey. We do lots of things here on the homestead. I'd love to have you along. So this is Jen, and I hope that wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. So until next time, everybody, bye-bye.